Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News in Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Thursday, March 4th, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. Well, the models are in and they're showing heavy snow mid March for the, well, for North America. But the big story it has been a historic geologic day for the Ring of Fire, for Iceland, for all of us. Multiple large earthquakes happening north of New Zealand, tsunami warnings and watches, tsunamis, and people waiting, thousands waiting for a fissure to open up and lava to spill out on the earth. But let's get to the news before we get to the good stuff. Hail and snow to hit Southern California. Northeast sees another cold blast. Keep calm. It is boom time. Snow is forecast to return to the northern Sierra Nevada, and that's not all. Montana and other regions will see snow. 20 inches of snow, in fact, buries Atlantic Canada. Whiteout conditions hit Maine, New York, Vermont, and beyond. And let's take a look at that. 20 inches of snow buries Atlantic Canada. The tail end of winter is hitting Atlantic Canada hard this week, particularly the province of Newfoundland, on which Tuesday reported heavy snow, howling winds, and blizzard, blizzard conditions. Conditions quickly began to deteriorate Monday night, and by Wednesday, the snowstorm had delivered 30-plus centimeters, or over a foot in some parts. Heavy snow and wind chills of minus 20 C are persisting in the northern sections. Heads up. And whiteout conditions hit Maine, New York, Vermont, and beyond. Thousands of power outages are reported across Maine as blowing winds and whiteouts impacted the state. That was their fate. 28 inches, in fact. Um, where was this? I don't see a location. Heavy snow and whiteout conditions in Maine. Take a look at this guy, gusty winds. And this is coming out yesterday. Pulling a sled there. And that's the cold blob we're talking about, which is basically the breakdown of the jet stream. And we can get into more detail here with the GFS model. Here's your Friday. And that snow is going to be moving into Washington State and the northern Sierras by Saturday morning. And pretty much snow all day Saturday in the North Sierras. Take a look at that. While snow moves into the Four Corners region, specifically Colorado, little snow coming in Sunday to the Idaho region and western Montana, western Wyoming there. By Monday, it'll be kind of quiet. Tuesday, a little bit of second pulse here. Do you see that Monday, Tuesday pulse into the uh, northern Sierras there? Boom. As the storm moves south and brings more snow to the west, a little clipper up there uh, to Iowa and Wisconsin. Maybe a little snow in Nebraska. And this system mid-month mid here, 14th, 15th, is going to bring three pulses to the northeast late in the models here. But this is showing snow in Philadelphia and South Jersey towards the end of March. So we'll keep a close eye on that for you. AccuWeather just released its spring forecast, and it's probably not what you hoped nor what will happen, <laughs> but we'll take a look at the map anyway. Rain and snow lingers in the northwest. Drought still down here in the southwest. Uh, snow early and mild, wet late, whatever that means, and slow transfer to spring for the entire upper tier here, including PA. Slow transition to spring. Ding, ding. Warm down in Florida. Who knew? Severe, frequent, severe weather outbursts from Iowa all the way down to Louisiana. So that's the forecast, as vague as it may be. It's warm in the northern plains in the upper Midwest currently. Mild and warm, above average temperatures are expected the next several days in the northern plains prior to snow mid-month in the upper Midwest. Meanwhile, a system will drop from the south central plains to Florida over the next couple of days with some rain and thunderstorms. Finally, locally heavy rain and mountain snow is expected across the Pacific Northwest into northern California in the next few days. Much needed moisture. And now March snows hitting Hawaii with three plus feet slamming South Korea. The UK is going to get snow mid month. We predicted that a few days ago. Here you see the March snow settling in Hawaii here. Webcam images on Monday up at Mauna Loa. Reported by Big Island News on the first day of meteorological spring. Now three feet slammed South Korea. One person was killed and over a hundred have been injured and rescued in traffic accidents across South Korea's Northeast due to heavy drifting snow. 
and this was on Tuesday, which was their lose day. The higher elevations at Gangwang Province received three feet of snow in a 24 hour period between Monday and Tuesday afternoon, according to local authorities. The inclement weather soon led to traffic accidents, multiple casualties across the province. You can see here a picture of that. A man in his 50s was killed after he was hit by a car on a snowy highway near Seoul. And a further 66 people have been taken to hospital with more than 45 rescued from their cars after being trapped in accumulating global warming goodness. Thanks, Cap. Here we can see the total snow mass for the northern hemisphere, excluding the mountains still above multi-decadal averages by 500 gigatons. That's quite a bit, by the way. And thanks to Dr. Roy Spencer, we have the UAH satellite based temperature of the global lower atmosphere for February and it's in 0.2 degrees above normal above the 30 degree multi decadal average back into 91 showing no global warming whatsoever. Now let's get into some more seismicity and we just closed a pretty important tab here. Do a dab. Dozens of earthquakes occur over 45 minutes at Oregon's Mount Hood. What caused them? Well, the earth shifting. Duh. Geologists investigate earthquake swarm beneath Oregon volcano. Oh, didn't we just talk about an earthquake swarm uh, underneath Mount Rainier? Yes, we did. What in the world is happening? Well, I'll tell you what's happening. You're living the next grand solar minimum and magnetic reversal in real time. So let's walk you through it. Mount Hood, Oregon, a small swarm of earthquakes beneath the summit of Oregon's Mount Hood this week is not a common occurrence. In fact, one happened back in January, and we also had a February swarm at Mount Rainier. But it's nothing to see here, according to the mainstream. There is no historical uh, cyclic event where West Coast uh, Cascadia volcanoes erupt during grand solar minimums that anyone knows about except uh, thousands of people like me at a diamond at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and other scientists that have been studying the historical facts about what happens. We predicted four years ago that Iceland would be erupting and then followed by Cascadia and right on tune, we have these earthquake swarms beneath the volcanoes that we predict that will be erupting. And that includes Mount Hood, Mount Rainier, Mount Shasta, so on and so forth. We will be doing a complete expose over at Magnetic Reversal News either tonight or tomorrow on this topic to bring you up to speed in case you have no idea what I'm talking about. But a brief earthquake swarm was detected beneath Mount Rainier and, and, that, and multiple earthquake swarms beneath Mount Hood and they are ever increasing. Here we see the latest earthquakes near Mount Rainier for the past 14 days. Three quakes above 2 mag and 36 below 2 mag for a total of 39 quakes. That is a little higher than normal background noise. Same thing happening over at Mount Hood. Now Greece has been shaken by a 6.2 magnitude earthquake, which is some of the biggest ever from this region. So we're, we're having hi geologically historical quakes in places that, well, New Madrid's next. And here we are at that uh, incredible seismic map where we can see the amazing cacophony of quakes here that are just ringing off north of New Zealand in the Kermadec Islands. And so thousands of earthquakes above five magnitude happening in 24 hours, hours of powers. Greece has not stopped ringing at 5.6 today, 5.0, multiple large aftershocks. USGS showing a single quake of 4.7 in Iceland. We'll get to them and rip them a new. New Zealand downgrades the tsunami warning after the 8.1 magnitude earthquake. Now today we've been, I was exhausted. I woke up to a 7.3 followed by a 7.4 followed by an 8.1. And it, then finally it was done. And after the 8.1 up at 10 kilometers, I realized the other two were pre-shocks. So a, a complete classic display of a high magnitude earthquake with large pre-shocks warning us of what was coming there. And Thankfully, the, there was not a lot, large displacement uh, on the seafloor, and it only led to small tsunamis. And we do have footage of it here now, uh, at least one of them. 
Well, the first of those tsunami surges, they started hitting uh, the North Island's coastlines about an hour ago. We have been sent through various vision of those surges coming through, the first in Tokamaru Bay near Gisborne, the second in Turakaka in Northland. That dramatic vision showed a wall of whitewash just moving across the ocean surface and also some really violent and unpredictable currents at a local marina. Now, evacuations, they were in order, evacuation orders in place for the Bay of Islands to Whangarei, Mata to Tolaga Bay, Great Barrier Island and the west coast of the North Island from Cape Ringa to Ahipara. A warning was also issued for our biggest city, Auckland. Residents were told to stay away from beaches, get out and off the water. It wasn't an evacuation order, but it was a warning. And we did see uh, police vessels and Coast Guard vessels departing from the ports of Auckland behind me to warn those boaties out on the water. Now our Civil Defence Minister, Kitty Allen, she has praised Kiwis for heeding advice this morning morning, keeping a cool, calm head and taking those evacuation orders in their stride and getting to higher points. And many of those people at evacuation points we did speak to about what they saw when those surges started rolling in. The surges have sort of been compressing and if you can see this sort of gap in here behind me, Wiwiki Passage, um, there's been water accelerating and surging through there and then sucking back out again. So it's sort of been uh, constant, uh, you know, every five or so minutes. So there you have it, and it appears as if there is no major life-threatening tsunamis in the region. Give them a thumbs up there for the coverage at Sky News, one of our favorite reporters over on the big island of Australia in Iceland. Now, moving over to more activity on the Earth, basically the antipode of where that major earthquake activity is up in Iceland there. It's actually closer to northern Spain, but still in that region, and they could be linked through the earth directly in a perpendicular axis. Now in Iceland, we see 18,000 earthquakes over the last eight days now, which is signaling a possible major eruption. And all of the science has been shifting every single 24 hours on what is actually happening there. What we do know is that there is a, a whole boatload of earthquakes. And they called an eruption here on this flexure point where you can clearly see diminished uh, density here of earthquakes diminishes out and then there's this straight line where the earthquakes increase tenfold this is when the harmonic tremor started and you could see the harmonic tremor diminishing with an actual lull here there is a complete gap in activity here for five minutes this is very telling of magma in placing stalling and getting ready to erupt and what we typically see with uh, large rift eruptions like this is that Harmonic tremor followed by a down drop, which we just saw, and here a complete stalling out, followed by the eruption days, even weeks later. So people that are watching the live streams, it could happen now, tomorrow, next week. But as long as we see this huge uptick in uh, seismic activity at the surface, we know that the, it, this is an ongoing event. There is no reason to suspect that this will stop at any time soon. And based on the down drop here and this complete gap in activity, either that is a lull in data. Irregardless, there is a huge drop down in the intensity of the seismicity and the tremor, which is always a precursor to the eruption in these cases. So that's just some of the information I can share you here. We'll also share you the most recent update from IcelandGeology.net. The Earth update on the activity at Fragradslafjall. Now, Fragradslafjall has now been added to the list with uh, Krajšovic and Rekianis. So Krajšovic and Rekianis were initially uh, thought to be the volcanoes in question. And three days ago, it was Rekianis Ridge that was showing magma moving under it. And then yes, yesterday, it was Krajšovic that had magma moving under it. And now today, it's Fagradlesfjall. Fagradlesfjall has the lava moving underneath of it and in placing uh, beneath. Now, the problem with that is that Fagradlesfjall volcano has no information. It has never erupted in the Holocene that we know about. And there's no information of pre-Holocene eruptions. So no one knows what this is, what this means. So there's that. And not only that, 
we don't o only have Iceland to worry about. We have a whole grouping of new earth uh, volcanic activity that I want to share with you tonight, including Pacaya volcano, which has been blasting well above 12,000 feet with a new paroxysm. And Etna is now on its ninth paroxysm. So let's quick get to Etna. Etna's volcanic ash advisory coming out today to 36,000 feet up to the stratospheric boundary there. Explosive activity continuing for the ninth time in two weeks. Uh, Toluis warned the volcanic ash plume rose up to 36,000 feet altitude or flight level 360 was moving at 25 knots to the northeast like a beast. And there we can see that ash plume. Here we can see some of the volcanic activity. And here we can see on the velocimeter that double peak. This is a new type of eruption coming from Etna. And now what happened was the main crater that had been causing these prior paroxysms went quiet. And now the central crater, a little bit to the north, has become more active. Lots of movement and activity going on there. Uh, if you want to stay up to date, the best volcano channel on the entire interwebs is Volcano Time Lapse. They only have 6,000 subscribers. It's embarrassing based on the work they're doing there. You want to see what happened in the ninth paroxysm here at Etna? Take a look. March 4th, he's got a one minute video, not even, where you could check out that. Now, you guys, you're looking at square kilometers of burping lava. It's absolutely spectacular. The last paroxysm. Here's the whole one hour event. You can watch it in high def there. Uh, but what we're going to share with you is some of the Pacaya eruption, which is totally fantastic. Ooh, and I like, I like to get a little bit of the chopper in the background. Ah, it's gone. Damn it. And here you can see that massive paroxysm coming out from Pacaya today. Let's blow that up. It's all, llanos, yeah, it's, uh, it's like a mini cinnabon. So uh, definitely an interesting and unique paroxysm coming from Pacaya. And we do have an uptick, in fact, at cinnabon. And that's not all. Let me, if I could backtrack here, I forgot to talk about one other volcano. Holy shmeno. It is about to start to rain now. Here's the Pacaya paroxysm we were just showing you and some of the lava that flowed down the side in the thermals. And we also have the Kreishuvik volcano warning. But there, another volcano was moved up a tick today here. Let me just find it for you. Pinatubo. So Pinatubo over in Luzon in the Philippines was raised, volcano alert level raised to yellow today. Oh, dear from quiet to low unrest, which could be another uptick. And a total of 1,722 quakes were reported by Phil Vox. So bad news at Pinatubo, volcanoes, they's be exploding. And we do have the video footage. And if you want the best video footage, please come over to Volcano Time Lapse, subscribe to the channel, tell them Diamond sent you, and I'm pretty sure that they know that that's who sent them. Here we can see more of the Pacaya eruption, totally spectacular, coming from Volcano Time Lapse, which is why we have a thumbs up here. Fantastic. Okay, let's move on because we're going deep tonight. Large asteroid Apophis will safely fly, fly by Earth on Friday. This is a big baby. This is a game changer and an earth ender, but it's not going to hit us this time, and it's not even a bender. Maybe it'll hit a, a satellite. See how it's showing it come through that debris field of satellites, and that could be a spectacular light show for us in the evening hours. No possible reentry, uh, however, but Apophis is slated to come nearby in a few decades on a more close approach that could end all life on the planet. So there's that. But we have more important things to worry about, like SpaceX SN10 Starship sticking the landing, which is BS in my opinion, because it actually hit at about 80 miles an hour and bounced and then was sitting crooked before it blew up. So there's that. But success is measured in different ways. Now, sources of hazardous high energy particles called cosmic rays have been located at the sun, which we already knew. So there's that. Scientists detect signs of a hidden structure in Earth's core. 
Al Gore's a bore. Now, what they're claiming is that you see the nice concentric circle ring model of the Earth here? Yes, they've added a new ring to the inner core. It's called the inner inner core. So we have another ring to add to the ding ding of fake science. The fake science that's been taught for 50 years at, from elementary school all the way up to university is this structure of the earth with uh, an inner core, an outer core, a mantle, an asthenosphere, a lithosphere, and the crust. Now, the only problem with that is that based on all scientific endeavor, this simple model does not work. And that's because we live in 2021 where we have three-dimensional tomography and other techniques that show a, an absolute three-dimensional dynamics beneath the surface. And what I mean by that is there are low-velocity plumes and fingers, and it's just not at all what they're showing here, not even close. And there could be a reason for that. Now, what else isn't even close is how long we've been on this planet. Hominid footprints on Crete could change evolutionary theory for good. These prints right there, like swimwear, are 5.6 million years old, adding insult to injury to the already decrepit fossil record of hominids on the planet Earth. In the last two decades, we've blasted Homo sapien all the way back to 2.4 million years ago. That means people as smart as you and I that could do podcasts just like this. We're sitting on this planet 2.4 million years ago. That means that the human species has overcome 10,000 cosmic catastrophes since that point. So do you think we'll make it through this one? I bet we do. And we are now pushing the bipedal upright walking hominids all the way back to 7 million years. And that's just in recent decades. So... What will we know in the future? Well, most of it will be burned up through, due to a solar flare, so we'll have to start over again. So there's that. Now, what happens when people get infected with two strains of coronavirus at once? Ha! Nothing! Read the article. They didn't even have symptoms because it's, well, it's, it's the fraud that is climate science and it's flat earth theory. Now, this is pretty interesting. Joseph E. Postma, who has the same credentials as I do. He has a graduate degree in science, just not in geology. But I mean, it might be astrophysics. I don't know. But he's on our side. He's a good guy, and he, and he screws around with the flat earthers. But what this podcast talks about is how that um, global warming theory is based on flat earth. It's not based on sphere earth. So that just adds another tick into what all the nonsense, garbage, dogma science in this climate change arena that has been fed to us for decades is based on a flat earth. Can you believe that? I can. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. When the mainstream academia, the new realm in university called climate science is based on flat earth. That is a boom to knowledge. And thank goodness that the three major earthquakes today did not cause massive life, loss of life. Uh, that is a big thumbs up because we've released a lot of pressure. This does not mean more catastrophic things are not coming because they are. And you should be bumming because there will be people hurt and in harm's way. The best way you can prepare is to not be scared, but be prepared. You can do that and help us by at going to our preparedness website for long-term food storage, preparewiththeranch.com, preparewiththeranch.com. All the links are below our video on how to support the channel. We want to thank all of our one-time donors, all of our Patreons, everybody that shares these videos, everybody that watches these videos. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with people that want to hear the real science that we're sharing because that's caring and that's a boom. Be safe. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge. And we'll see you again real soon, like a boom. Nee, 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 nee.